The Nerdcast Empire is on the air, and no, it's not Sunday. You're not off on your day of the week. This is a special edition of the Nerdcast Empire running midweek, thanks to some big news in WWE that was announced today. We are jumping in the studio to do an emergency podcast, if you will, talk about the WWE's new deal for Raw and other properties internationally. I'm Matt, back in the studio, joined in the studio today on this emergency podcast by Mike. Mike, how's it going? It is going. What, a, what an exciting news day this is. It's been a very eventful day for sure. And joining us in the studio as well is Rachel. Rachel, how's it going? Good. It's good. It's crazy. What a day. It has been quite the day. It started first thing this morning with the announcement that WWE had reached an agreement with Netflix for a 10-year deal for the rights to Monday Night Raw, at least it's Monday Night Raw at the moment. Uh, reports came out later that deal is for approximately $5 billion, which is about $500 million a year. We'll get into some of the details and we'll get the opinions of our experts on this. A couple of big things that stick out. Number one, obviously, this is a deal that is for more than Monday Night Raw. It will be for international rights to NXT, SmackDown, premium live events in markets where there are not existing rights holders. So according to Brandon Thurston, who a lot of the numbers we're going to be giving you today will come from him. If you kind of break it out and figure out what they're paying for Monday Night Raw, it is about a 1.3 times increase over the previous deal, which is in line with what the markets were expecting in this deal. I think the markets are additionally excited about the potential for what this deal could mean to WWE, to TKO, and also to Netflix, which is why we've seen the markets kind of go crazy throughout the day in the stock for TKO and the stock for Netflix and after hours trading. But again, $500 million a year for 10 years. It is a deal that Netflix does have the right to opt out after five years, but they can also have the right to extend the deal for 10 more years. So it could become a 20 year deal. Presumably there are some escalators in there that would increase the amount of money that would make if they did extend it for 10 years. Raw will start airing on Netflix in January, 2024. As of right now, it's going to remain on Mondays, but Nick Khan, a very extensive interview with Pat McAfee certainly laid out a very reasonable list of things that might make WWE and Netflix decide to move that off of Monday. Certainly we'll know as we start getting closer to the beginning of the year, raw will need a home for the final few months of 2024. Their deal with USA expires in September. It is expected that WWE and USA will come to some sort of agreement to extend that deal through the end of 2023, considering that USA is remaining on as a partner with SmackDown seems to be in their best interest to kind of play ball there. It's a big deal. Um, I got some more numbers. We want to kind of get some thoughts first, then we'll jump back into some more details of this deal. We'll start with Mike. Mike, uh, it's a huge deal for the WWE. We've been talking for weeks about how this was going to play out, whether it was going to stay on network TV, whether it was going to go to streaming, how much money, how long a term. I don't think a lot of people were talking about Netflix, and I certainly don't think a lot of people were talking about the kind of money they got. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, honestly, Netflix kind of came out of nowhere to me. I, I wasn't thinking of them as a player at all. You first, it's kind of interesting how diversified WWE's product offering is going to be, where you're going to have SmackDown on presumably USA in the future, cable television, NXT on the CW network television, and then Raw now on Netflix. It's like they're playing every side of the the televised media landscape, so to speak. It, it, it's kind of interesting from the Netflix side. Um, I saw an, uh, an article on The Hill saying that Netflix actually released 130 fewer shows in 2023 than 2022. A lot of that probably had to do with strike, of course. But you got to think for them, it's it's you know, we could produce more shows in 2025 moving forward. Or maybe we could hitch our wagon onto something that'll give us just an insane amount of content that we don't have to pay more overhead beyond just the contract for. That was a term that uh, it was either Ari Emanuel or Nick Khan mentioned today. in one of the interviews I watched that talked about WWE being a turnkey product, basically Netflix goes to WWE and says, Hey, we want your Monday night raw. And they're like, okay, you give us the money and we'll give you Monday night raw. You don't have to hire writers. You don't have to hire actors. You don't have to do any of that stuff. We're going to take care of all that. We're going to produce the show. We're going to deliver it to you each and every week. That, like you said, is certainly very attractive to Netflix that they can basically just allow WWE to do their thing and not have to worry about 
everything else that comes with trying to produce weekly television. Yeah. I mean, uh, coming out of those strikes, I have to think the cost of doing business with creating your own show has only gotten more expensive. So if you have this gigantic library of content that you can just shell out money for and have it delivered to your door, I don't know why you wouldn't do that. And to piggyback on what Mike said, talking about those different homes for the, the deals, just to kind of wrap all that up. Raw, of course, we'll start with Netflix on January 2025. SmackDown goes to USA on October 2024. NXT to the CW in October 2024. And a reminder that the premium live event deal with Peacock runs through 2026. That is a completely separate deal. And it's completely separate negotiations. It's not a given that that will be wrapped into Netflix when that becomes available. So that's another chunk of money that WWE could potentially be looking to lock down when that becomes available in 2026. Rachel, let's turn it over to you. You're the one that kind of got things started this morning by posting that in the discord, your thoughts on what was a crazy day. Well, initially I double checked it before I even posted it because there's so many like you have to. Yeah, because I was like, I'm not going to post this over there and then have it be completely false. And it just surprised me. Like Mike said, like I didn't think Netflix was it was never one of the ones mentioned when I saw who was in the game to try to get the rights to raw. So that really surprised me. But um, I'll be anxious to see how it goes. Like um, when I looked at it earlier, they've only had a handful of live streaming events. Mostly it's just you stream what they have in their catalog. So um, I'll be anxious to see what WWE can do on Netflix and for Netflix. Yeah, I think that's both of those things are true. I think what WWE is able to do and how they're going to grow their product. You consider how many Netflix subscribers there are worldwide that are now going to have instant access to WWE's product, whether you have the ad tier or the ad free tier. That's another big thing that's come out of this is that raw will air ad free on that ad free tier. So obviously it's going to be very similar. I think to the picture in picture that you see with AEW through bleacher report that or fight plus or wherever that airs that you you have action during the break. You're going to get to see that without the commercial break interruptions, which I think will be good. Still going to be a three hour program, still going to air live. What day of the week? Still certainly up in the air. But I think another interesting thing to me is how it changes the way people consume Netflix, because I know Mike, for example, big fan of Cobra Kai. Absolutely. One of the greatest reboots or continuations of a, of a show or movie ever. But I feel like there are also a lot of people who subscribe to Netflix, watch Cobra Kai or whatever. And then as soon as they're done shotgunning that show, they bail on their subscription. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I canceled I'll my subscription thought, a couple months ago. I thought that was what Mike did. So now you have a situation where Netflix has a property that is going to run 52 weeks a year. So you're not going to be able to shotgun it in one setting. How is that going to change the way people consume Netflix? And therefore, how is that going to allow Netflix to be able to expand what they charge advertisers, how what their subscription costs are, because now they're able to kind of lock people in for an entire year. I would love to be the executive in the meeting that came up with the bright idea that, hey, guys, maybe we should try live television. That seems to have a lot of money involved in it, because that to me, as long as Netflix has been around, they've been this streaming old movies and, and TV shows kind of binging, not really appointment TV. It's more like you watch it whenever you want. I don't know why it took them so long to really try to delve into this this area of of entertainment. I mean, we've seen football on Amazon. We've seen, you know, Peacock with sports. I just I obviously ESPN Plus has been around for years now. I I don't know. It's interesting to me that we're just now seeing this. Yeah. And it again, it really kind of locks you in. It doesn't allow you to drop in and drop out. You're going to want to have this year round. And We'd have to think because of that, the subscription numbers that we've read are only going to get higher. At the end of the year, they were at 80.3 million subscribers in the U.S. and Canada. That works out to about approximately 72 million in the United States. To give you an idea, ESPN is in 70.2 million homes, which is the most of ESPN, ESPN2, FS1, USA, TBS, TNT. So immediately you're jumping in in front of more eyeballs, Rachel. That's got to be huge for WWE and Netflix that you have this property. 
that right now is red hot and you're going to throw it in front of 72 million viewers that are just going to get access to it each and every week. Oh, definitely. And I, I was saying earlier, like we wouldn't even have Netflix in our house if it weren't for my kids watching their shows. And my husband made the comment earlier. He's like, oh, with them going on Netflix, then you can drop Peacock. I'm like, well, no, because Peacock still has the premium live events. So it lets people it makes people have to get more. I mean, everyone kind of wins because like you're going to still get Peacock because of the live events. You're still going to get like I have Hulu live TV. So that's how I get my USA and that's how I get the CW. And then now Netflix, too. I mean, I'm not dropping Netflix anytime soon. I think it's a brilliant move on their part. You know, call me crazy, but, you know, if they'd invent this thing where you put all the streaming services together into one service and then you just pay a certain fee for that service. You know, they got to think about coming up with something like that. Brilliant. I would call it Dish Network. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. But again, that is the world we're living in, where in the efforts to cut the cable, people are going to have to tie their wagon to a lot of different other little cables to try to piece together their TV. But. At the same time, it, like you said, it makes a ton of sense for WWE to diversify its outlets. One area I don't think that's been talked about nearly enough today is what this means internationally. For example, I saw these numbers and, and a lot of people saying, reporting in the United Kingdom, that this will be the first time they've been able to watch WWE without going to pirating services in a long time. TNT Sports, which was where WWE's products were airing, airs in 1.5 million homes in the UK. WWE Network is in less than 100,000 homes on an estimate. Netflix has 16.5 million subscribers in the UK. They're now going to get WWE's product and their pay-per-views and SmackDown and NXT. What is that going to mean? If you look at that and you kind of take that out over so many other international markets where WWE is looking to expand and run more premium live events and start NXT branches and all these other things that they've talked about for years. Again, I think that may be a much larger component to this deal, even than the U S TV rights. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure that was, that was definitely something on their mind. I, to be honest, I didn't know that was the case with the United Kingdom. It, you know, I, I noticed today that a couple of the content creators that I follow that are based in the UK kind of brought it up like, hey, I guess WWE's back on the table. And I didn't really put two and two together to think that it likely wasn't really available to them all that well until this deal goes into place. And I think that's why you saw such a big event with AEW at Wembley, because that's kind of what all those people were having to watch because it was the most readily available form of professional wrestling in the UK. And now WWE comes swooping in with this deal. And you have to think a big WWE UK pay-per-view event is probably somewhere down the road where they're going to try to run some big venues over there as well. Another thing that's big Netflix will be producing documentaries. And I know that's something that came up today. The big Netflix documentary that everybody points to is the big formula one documentary that really took formula one to a totally different level of popularity. It increased the TV deal for ESPN. It's basically the one racing company that has increased in fans over the past 10 years compared to the IndyCar circuit in the U.S. or NASCAR, which seems to be going the other direction. So you're going to be getting all this additional content with Netflix. It's it's honestly crazy. And I, you know, kind of want to throw it over to Rachel. I mean, it's 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 a wild day for WWE. It's a kind of an exclamation point on what has been this crazy run that WWE's on. And it comes just a handful of days before maybe their most exciting pay-per-view event of the year in the Royal Rumble. Oh, I think it's huge that it comes like this is just such a big week. I mean, Royal Rumble is like the road to WrestleMania. So for them to come out and also recently they came out and said they're not doing any like physical digital media anymore. They're not bringing out DVDs. So I used to collect all those. So now, I mean, having them assumably on Netflix at some point, I think that I'm, I'm excited about this week. I think it's a, it's just the beginning. Uh, it's wild, honestly. And then I think a lot of news on this is going to continue to come out. It was great to see some of the interviews today. I think the news is still kind of piecing together to see how this is going to work out. This could have been a special edition for a lot of other reasons. For example, we now have a Nerdcast Empire store on our website. If you go to nerdcastempire.com, the top of the page, it says store. Click on that. You can buy some Nerdcast Empire merch. And we make a little bit of money off of each thing sold. Not a ton, but just a, a chance to maybe try to recoup some of our operating expenses and chance for people to represent the Nerdcast Empire. So we certainly encourage you to go to nerdcastempire.com. 
for that. That is some exciting news, but it's not the big news of the day. Obviously, WWE hooking up with Netflix for the deal to Monday Night Raw for 10 years or somewhere between five and 20 years to be completely accurate. The other big news today kind of came almost immediately after is the news that The Rock is joining the TKO's board of directors. This is going to allow him to get the intellectual property rights to The Rock. So now Dwayne Johnson can use The Rock and whatever marketing he wants to use. It also injects more star power into their board. It potentially sets him up to be more involved on the wrestling side, probably still on a part-time basis, but certainly getting him involved again. Probably more questions than answers at this point. Let's start with Rachel. Your thoughts on the news of The Rock kind of getting back involved with WWE by joining TKO's board today. I feel like it was a matter of time. Obviously, it's in his blood. He's been a part of the wrestling business for a very long time. His family, obviously, is extremely big in the business. Um, I think also, I didn't know that he didn't have the intellectual property of his name. Like, I know he still went by, like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but I didn't know he actually didn't, like, own that. So that was interesting. Um, Also, I think it helps him keep the, the foot in the door. So, like, if he goes off to Hollywood for a little while, he can still, like be that part time and come back and do storylines in the business if he chooses to. So, yeah, I think it's interesting. I think it's neat. It's certainly interesting for sure. And I, and again, isn't a guy who's maybe one of the biggest stars in the world. You, you get him back involved with WWE, which is just another thing that shows you where WWE is compared to the rest of the wrestling industry. It's, it's not even uh, operating the same game. Basically <laughs> it's not even checkers to chess at this point. It, it's so much on a different level, but It does open up a lot of questions because obviously there's a lot of talk about him and Roman Reigns, whether it's this year's WrestleMania, whether it's next year's WrestleMania, whether it's somewhere in one of these overseas uh, premium live events. I've even heard Saudi Arabia speculated. So it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out. And I think it'll be interesting to see what that does to the current storylines. I know that was something that Mike, you and I talked about a little bit today online because WWE, I feel like, right now gets a little more of the benefit of the doubt. You still have a little bit of faith that they're not just going to throw all their storylines in a shredder with the rock coming around more, but it is, it certainly kind of makes you pause, which is probably what they want you to do at this point. Yeah, I can definitely see that being the case is the sowing seeds of doubt there only in, in this case, more of a positive way than negative where we probably would have seen it being negative in the past. I, 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 I'm, I like it from the, standpoint of he has a vested interest in the success of the company now. So you are probably going to see him tied to some of these big international shows just to improve the house and and generate more more revenue that way. He's somebody who's honestly bigger than any of their titles. Mm -hmm. There's there's really no reason for him to be a champion. It's you throw him in there and some because he's still clearly physically capable of wrestling. You throw him in there with any number of the top stars today and it's a dream match, but it doesn't it doesn't need any kind of stakes involved beyond we're getting to see this guy wrestle the rock. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of those matches still left out there. I did see, I guess somebody asked Steve Austin about he and the rock want to do it one more time. And uh, Austin says something like, yeah, if you want to watch it in slow motion, <laughs> like, that's what it's going to look like. But and there are certainly some possibilities out there. And, and again, when you're talking about these mega house shows or these mega houses, these big buildings, and you're talking about Philadelphia, and most of their big PLEs are now in these big outdoor venues. Yeah. You know, if you're going to sell out WrestleMania two nights in a row, if you put the rock on one of those nights, that's probably going to help you out quite a bit. And they're already heading towards a sellout. I think in the neighborhood of 60 plus thousand each night, you know, star power again, it's the old, rising tide raises all boats. And right now it just feels like WWE has so many stars. And I know we won't get too much into specifically what's going on with raw because we could spend another hour talking about Monday night raw. Yeah. Right now it just feels like every show that WWE is doing, they put two of their biggest guys in the ring and say, you didn't know you wanted this match, but here are these two guys. Now you want this match. Give me Rollins and Gunther. I I, I need that now. (laughs) Thanks a lot. And Cody and punk. Yeah. I mean, that was that was awesome. I mean, without getting too into it, I mean, that could be promo of the year right there. Yeah. We're, we're not even out of January yet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That just seems to be, you know, they've had about a nine week period where they've been in between these premium live events with the Royal Rumble coming up this Saturday. And it feels like that is most of what they've done is they have taken so many different 
guys and gals and put them in the ring and said, you know, you want to see this match. I mean, I last week it was Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. We have them interacting. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah, that that's a main event level match. And that just feels like that the difference, the gap between WWE and AEW is that WWE right now could just put on this insane event and have a number of different cards and you'd be completely okay with it because so many of these people are over at a yeah. totally different level than they have been. Well, now they have you hoping that on Saturday we're going to see this moment where Punk and Cody come to blows. Likely middle of the rumble. You just had some giant come in and eliminate like the entire field gets eliminated. They're in the, the ring by themselves. I mean, the house would go nuts for that. And they intentionally on Raw last night had them separate. They had them go out on yeah. the sides of the ring. Clearly, we're going to keep these guys apart. We're not going to give you what you want in this case for free. You're going to have to show up on Saturday yeah. to see it. Yeah. And then that's really cool. It, it makes it a fun time to be a fan. You know, Rachel, we, we've been watching these events for a long time. Right now, it's the point where you're excited that these events are coming up and you're excited to watch Raw and you're excited to watch SmackDown because they're actually giving you a reason to want to watch. Well, I mean, I remember I even came over yesterday and said, I'm just anxiously waiting for Monday Night Raw tonight because I want to see what's going to happen. And uh, we were, me and Mike were discussing the Royal Rumble and how there's so many guys in it. Like, it, they don't need to have a bunch of surprises because it's still going to be just that good. And everything that's going on, I'm just... I just can't wait. I love the Royal Rumble. It's my favorite pay-per-view of the year. And like Mike and I have talked about, I think your surprises can be pretty logical ones. You can have guys like Braun Strowman show up yeah. in the yeah. Rumble. You can have other guys that have been gone for a while, or you can have, you know, Mickey James come back for another right. entrance. Like you can have people that it would just make sense for them to be around or Trish Stratus coming back again. Yeah. Like you don't have to, you know, really go off the board and get somebody crazy and people are going to eat it up. But, oh, yeah. if, but if you have something crazy, you know, even better, <laughs> that, that can work, too. So it's crazy. And honestly, it would be hard for us to sit here and pick winners for those events, because I feel like there are so many different directions they could go with it. And that's, yeah. you know, when you have logical storytelling, but you still don't have a direct answer as to how it's going to go. That's the best kind because it, it makes sense. It's not insulting your intelligence, but at the same time, who knows what's going to happen? I think obviously the multiple titles for both the men and women throws a wrench in any predictions as well, because, yeah, you could pick one that you might think lines up with with the world title or the undisputed title, but they could go the other direction. There, there's still so many ways to get to WrestleMania. When you yeah. also have the Elimination Chamber coming up, which gives you another path to creating a number one contender. Yeah. And yeah. you have Damian Priest still walking around with money in the bank, which means he could call his shot. And honestly, if he's not going to just cash in on somebody, why wouldn't he just challenge somebody at WrestleMania? Like, I'm cashing this in for a title match at WrestleMania. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Like, what are you going to do about it? So you know, jumping back into the rock thing real quick. I just thought of this. I, do you think part of the deal might also be so Netflix revives the Young Rock sitcom? Ooh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. I, mean, I think you know the what I saw of that was was funny. It was I really mean, good. It wasn't a great show, but it was funny. Well, I think what you're going to see is your those kind of things are going to be more common. I think you're going to see more reality shows, more obviously already mentioned documentaries, behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. A lot yeah. of the, like the. 24 365 type shows where you're you're really getting a chance to look behind the curtain roads to the top yes. <laughs> Do it. there's still time to, to bring that back yes. but uh, it's just a, a wild day in wwe one final news item that i have not i don't think it's been confirmed anywhere officially but i've certainly seen enough people post about it that makes you think that it's probably a done deal is that uh, the news that kevin patrick is going to be off oh, of smackdown yeah. starting this friday Kevin Patrick uh, is a great soccer announcer. We've talked about it extensively here, but he just, for whatever reason, didn't have the chops to be a play-by-play -play guy for wrestling. But I will say, and I'll get both of your thoughts on it, it's great to see that WWE gave him that chance because I feel like in the Vince McMahon WWE of the past, he would have gotten one or two weeks and they would have just been like, no, pal, you're not good enough. You're fired. And WWE not only gave him a time with Michael Cole as a three man booth, but then gave him a couple of weeks with just Corey Graves as a two man booth. And I feel like they tried really hard to get him to that point. It's just not there. And so it's they're going to make a change. Don't know what that change is going to be. Don't know. If Michael Cole's just going to fill in on SmackDown and do both shows again for a little bit. 
or if they bring Big Joseph in or somebody from the outside, like Mario Ronaldo, potentially, you know, like he's still floating out there because Showtime into their boxing series. So yeah. we'll see how that all shakes out. But start with Rachel on this one. Your thoughts on potentially a big shakeup on SmackDown. I mean, like you said, we talked about it before this, like he he's he does OK, but obviously he's not meant for that role. And I mean, I could see him going back down to like NXT and maybe if you wanted to hone the craft a little bit more and work a little bit and uh, like backstage away from actually live TV. But uh, I'll be interested to see who end up who ends up taking that spot and who ends up because Corey Graves can work with a lot of people. So I'll be interested to see who ends up taking that seat. Yeah, certainly be interesting. And I think. Keeping Kevin Patrick on as a studio host or a backstage yeah. interviewer would make a ton of sense because he was really good in both. But again, it's not something that everybody can do. They're very good broadcasters that cannot do wrestling and probably vice versa as well. But uh, again, great that he got the chance. I think if this is indeed the move, I think it's it's certainly the right move. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what they do as a long term solution, because obviously Vic Joseph is more than capable of, of getting the job done. I. I'd kind of hate to see him leave NXT because I think the work between he and Booker is really good. Yeah, Kevin Patrick, I like the guy. I, you know, if you had a studio show for him, he would be great at it. And, and like you said, I mean, guy can call soccer, but I just think it's it's kind of a different skill set. And it, he doesn't there's a certain fire that he doesn't bring to a wrestling play by play that I just I don't know if you can teach that. Like you either have it in your voice or you don't. Yeah, and it just for whatever reason, just hasn't worked out. But again, uh, we'll see how that all shakes out and didn't want to get too deep into that, because obviously by the time we record again, maybe we'll have a better idea. And of course, we will be recording again on Saturday night with our review of the Royal Rumble or favorite or one of our favorite events of the year. Should be a very interesting time. That podcast will go up on Sunday. So make sure you check that out or check out our website at NerdcastEmpire.com. For all of our information, our podcast, our news store, which is really awesome. Make sure you check that out. Before we sign off today, we'll start with Rachel. Your final thoughts on what has been a crazy day that pulled us all into the studio on a Tuesday night to record an extra podcast. It's exciting. I cannot wait to see what Netflix puts on, like the different, um, like you said, documentaries and just where this leads WWE, where this leads the wrestling uh you said wrestling in general. I I'm excited. I think it should be very interesting. Mike, your final thoughts. Yeah. I, it, what can I say? WWE's hot right now. Really impressed with, with triple H's work as far as the creative goes. And, and even more so impressed with Nick Khan. Anytime I see him do any kind of appearance, dude just leaves you impressed. I it, it's, you're always cautiously optimistic when WWE seems to be going in a good direction. <laughs> you're waiting for the rug to be pulled out from under you. And if he's one of the guys calling the shots, I, I can't help but feel optimistic. Guy that turned winnings from Wheel of Fortune into a law degree, into a super agent, and now the most powerful man in sports entertainment, I think to be very fair to say. Yeah, and I, I definitely recommend people watch his interview on McAfee's show today. Just, just for the story about how he and Triple H got connected through a potential Tim Tebow Big Show match at WrestleMania. I just... Just such a crazy story. Yeah, wild stuff and certainly a great interview today. That's going to wrap things up for our emergency podcast here midweek. We thank you so much for your continued support of the Nerdcast Empire. Looking forward to our big review of the Royal Rumble coming up this week. And of course, we're only about a week and a half away from the next NXT premium live event, which is Vengeance Day. Certainly very excited for that. So for our entire crew who gathered together on a Tuesday to Put this podcast together. I am Matt saying so long. Don't forget to join the empire, the Nerdcast Empire.